So now is a time in our service where we move into our meditation together. So I'd like to ask you now to just begin by closing your eyes or just finding a spot on the floor or somewhere just to soften your gaze. Or if you're at home, you may wish to lay down on the floor, just whatever is the most comfortable for you. Just allow yourself to just become one with the chair or the floor that is supporting you and just allowing yourself to root to Mother Earth and to really draw the energy that pulses through this planet. That nourishing, warm, healing energy it's always moving all around us. Just allow yourself to begin to really, truly root to that energy. And just become comfortable. This isn't a time to hold on to any worries or stressors outside of ourselves that we feel may be weighing us down. This is just the time, even if only for a moment, to just let those things go. And I invite us to really take a moment and let's focus on Thanksgiving today, not the holiday, but the word and what it means thanksgiving, maybe even just gratitude. Because it's thanksgiving and gratitude that are the key to allowing more, not just abundance, but super abundance into your life. So I want to ask you today to think of something in your life that you are thankful for. Maybe it's sitting in this room right now. Maybe it's a person. Maybe it's a pet, a plant, your house. Whatever it is, just think of something that you are thankful for. Here at Unity, we teach not only is envisioning important to bringing things into manifestation, it's also the feeling that's behind it. So I invite you to now hold what it is that you're thankful for and allow yourself to feel those feelings of thanksgiving, those feelings of gratitude that, that wash over you when you think of this object or this person. yourself to feel the excitement when you're in the, its presence. To feel the joy that you feel when you're around it. Think how beautiful the sight of it is when you lay your eyes upon it. And today, in our meditation, I want us to just focus on that feeling, to just allow that feeling to just sit with us for a moment. Just opening that door to that super abundance that's there. It's yours for the taking. So today, I, as we go into the silence, I want us to just sit in that silence and just allow ourselves to feel these feelings of thanksgiving. Just allow it to wash through every cell of your body as we enter into our moment of silence.
And as you begin to bring your awareness back to this room, I give you a challenge today. A challenge to not just allow Thanksgiving to be a day or a season, but allowing Thanksgiving to become a regular part of your life. To wake up each day and before you get out of bed, to go back to this feeling, this feeling that you held today during this meditation. That is the key to all of the superabundance in your life that you could possibly imagine. That is the key to living a life of gratitude, a life of thanksgiving. So I ask you to remember that feeling and to hold it close to your heart because it's always there. All of this abundance is yours for the taking. You just have to remember. So I ask you to just repeat after me silently or out loud, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Today, I am thankful. And remember those words, today I am thankful. And so it is, and so we allow it to be. Namaste. a pretty good job. <laughs> so how is everybody this morning? Great. So I'm wondering what happened while I was gone. Like I was gone two weeks, the congregation has grown, all right? I don't know what that says about me. I'm gone two weeks and the congregation grows. <laughs> People are sitting in different seats than their normal seats this morning. It's like y'all like you're doing this like episode of Punked or something. But one thing I wonder is, what did y'all do to Martin, our tech guy? I mean, he was just cocky this morning with that football score, wasn't he? <laughs> Either y'all were a bad influence on him, or he was in bad influence on you. I'm not sure. But anyway, we do have some new people that are Packers fans, so I'm going to be nice this morning. But anyway. <laughs> So happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I know it's a little early, but we're, you know, by the time we see each other next week, it will already have come and gone, which is just surprising to me that it's going by so fast this year. But anyway, so today we're going to talk a little bit about, we're going to use some wisdom that a very wise woman shared with us, and I'll let you know who she is here in just a minute, unless some of you guess. So a wise woman once called gratitude and thanksgiving qualities of the soul. And she went on to say that the practice of Thanksgiving should be observed in the home every day of the year, not just on the national holiday. Heaven and earth listen and respond to the soul that is quickened into praise and thanksgiving. Praise is gratitude in action. Does anybody know who said that just right offhand? Uh, you are correct. <laughs> sorry, there's no prize, Josie. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll talk. I'll give you something afterwards. But, anyway. but yes, the woman who said these things was our Unity co-founder, Myrtle Fillmore. And this was actually a quote that came from her book, How to Let God Help You. And this was published in 1956, which was 25 years after Myrtle made her transition. But in fact, there's a chapter in the book titled Thanksgiving where she dedicated an entire chapter to the subject. So Thanksgiving, now Thanksgiving is a day where we, you know, we, we buy and we base the turkey, right? We're out shopping, trying to get all those last minute, you know, food items, grocery stores are packed, you know, got to get the marshmallows, got to get the pumpkin pie spice, you know, we eat lots of pumpkin pie, if you like pumpkin pie or pecan or chest pie, that's a big one in the South, we like our chest pie or our buttermilk pie. And it's also a day that we enjoy company with family and friends, right? And no, D, I do not want you to go make a chess pie. I'm already seeing, <laughs> I've seen the wheels turn, so never mind. Let me go ahead. I'm trying to cut back on that kind of stuff. But anyway, let me just throw that out there. It's like a buttermilk pie. Have you ever had buttermilk pie? 
Think of like a custard, like a custard pie. I guess that's the best way I can describe it. Google it when you get home. It's really good. It's really good. <laughs> maybe Mindy can actually make, well, maybe Dee should try to make one so everybody can have chess pie. Never mind. So Mindy can make one. It's pretty good. So maybe we'll have to make chess pie for me. <laughs> She said that means it's very easy to make. That's why she can make it. But maybe we can bring in some chess pie. So y'all just hold on on that. But usually on Thanksgiving, you know, we think about football and the Macy's Day Parade. You know, it plays on our television in the backgrounds as we're cooking and as we're enjoying our feasts. And, you know, we're already probably looking forward to the leftovers for that afternoon, right? I know I'll be eating a meal and I'm already looking forward to nuking a plate of leftovers before I go to bed. But, you know, we may sometimes think back to, you know, the Native Americans and the pilgrims and, you know, the reason that we've learned that the holiday came about in the first place, right? You know, we may view it, when we think about it this way, we may even view it as some distant happening, you know, something that happened in the past that's, you know, now gone. Something that's just left us with this up-and-coming Black Friday sale and this Christmas season cook-off and all of that kind of stuff. But is it really, is that what Thanksgiving really is? You know, should we view it as something that happened in the distant past? As a day to, you know, just kind of stuff our faces and to kick back and enjoy football on the TV and argue politics with Uncle Ned at the, at the dinner table? But I'd say it's probably more than that, wouldn't you? Thanksgiving is probably more than that. I mean, those things, other than Uncle Ned talking politics at the dinner table... They're great and all, but are they the true meaning of Thanksgiving? So let's first talk a little bit about Thanksgiving and what it really is. Now in her Thanksgiving chapter, Myrtle says this. She says, the day of national Thanksgiving is a day originally instituted in recognition of God as the source of the nation's supply and prosperity. A day set apart as a special tribute of praise and gratitude to the great giver of all good. Giving thanks, she said, has increased meager supply into superabundance before, and thus it can again. So let's talk about that a little bit today. Let's talk about what giving thanks and what giving gratitude is really all about and what it does for our lives, what it brings into existence in our lives. Now, many of you know that Minnie and I just returned from a vacation, and we went on a cruise down to the Mexican Riviera. Now, I have to say it was a little bit of a surprise when we're sweating like crazy walking around in Mexico when we flew out of Chicago. So we get off the plane, and we walk out of the airport into Chicago, and it's like somebody left the refrigerator door open. It was like a night and day difference. But we really enjoyed the ocean and the sun while we were gone and just the time away. But during our time away, something unexpected happened for us. We were able to witness true gratitude in action. So those of you who haven't been on a cruise may realize that cruise ships aren't generally staffed with people from America. You know, most of them are people from the Philippines, but there are other people, too, that, that typically staff and work on cruise ships. You know, we met people from Colombia, from Peru, from Chile, you know, and from all different types of other countries. And this really excited Mindy and I because we were able to talk to some of them. And we were able to learn a little bit more about their jobs. And they shared with us some information about their home countries, too, while we were on the cruise. But despite these subjects, you know, I began to notice a theme after a little while. And Mindy and I both talked about it. You know, gratitude. After learning that they work seven days a week for eight or nine months at a time on those cruise ships, I specifically mentioned to one of them, it was a boy named Emmanuel that worked in the, the, uh, the food area, our uh, buffet area where we had all that wonderful food. But I remember looking at him and I said, wow, you know, you must really enjoy the cruise industry to, to work as hard as you do. And he looks at me and he says, well, it's not as much that as needing the money and needing my job. He said, you know, after 15 months of being out of work, I finally have my job back. You know, we can't tell you how happy we are that all of you have decided to take this cruise and to come back. That all of you have decided to come back. And then Raul. 
Mindy and I took a shore excursion to Puerto Vallarta. You know, it was a walking tour of the city. And we had the honor and the privilege of meeting this wonderful tour guide named Raul. You know, he enthusiastically greeted us when we got off the ship. He immediately joked, which, you know, that's, that's definitely a friend of mine. You give me a joke right off the bat, you're definitely a friend. <laughs> but he has this huge smile on his face. You know, we, we both loved his energy immediately. You know, he excitedly and proudly showed us his city. You know, he took us to all of the hidden gems that we may not have otherwise been able to see as just regular tourists. And he, he even took us to a jewelry store that a friend of his ran and they had a small margarita bar set up in the back. <laughs> and Raul's going to everybody saying, can I get you a margarita? Can I get you? And he's just, they're like, just like passing out free margaritas. I mean, they're slinging free margaritas back there. So we're walking around in the store holding margaritas and drinking margaritas. <laughs> but he also takes us to a restaurant where we were able to sample some amazing authentic tequila too. And we learned a lot about tequila. We even learned that tequila is not meant to actually be shot. It's actually meant to be sipped and savored. So we learned about all that too. But it was really good. But Raul did this with one of the biggest smiles that I've ever seen on a human face. And he just had a smile every time we looked at him. And later, not long before we got ready to board, a sh the, board, to board the ship again that afternoon, he stops and he looks at us and his smile left. And he has tears in his eyes instead. And he tells us, he goes, I want to thank you all. You know, I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. My family and I had such difficult times during the pandemic when the cruise ship stopped. And he said, my wife and I, we ate lots of beans and rice, and we weren't sure how we would make it. But now, now the ships have come back, and you have come back. And I want to thank you all for taking this cruise and for coming back. And you could just tell that it touched everybody in our group. You know, I wanted, Mindy and I both wanted to grab him and bring him home with us. <laughs> but he also, he was so thrilled when I, you know, people were getting off the bus and Mindy steps up off the bus and I reach out to grab her hand to help her off the bus and he looks at me and he says, that's amazing, you are Mexican now. He was just so happy, you know. But, <laughs> but I'll never forget the gratitude that that man had that day. And, you know, it went beyond that. He took us to an old church, you know, telling us about he and his wife had been married there 40 years before. And he told us how grateful he was for his wife. And it was just really all beautiful to see. And I went away on that vacation to rest and to have my pina coladas and my margaritas later on, I learned. And to enjoy time away. But I feel that we were given so much more on that trip. You know, I felt we were truly given the gift of being able to witness gratitude in action. So Myrtle tells us, she says, giving thanks has increased meager supply. Wait a second. I already read that, didn't I? No, no, I'm going back. Never mind. That's, that's intentional. <laughs> so as a reminder, Myrtle tells us, giving thanks, she said, has increased meager supply into superabundance before, and thus it can again. So do we think that we celebrate the holiday of Thanksgiving due to something that happened in the past? That the superabundance that was brought into existence back then can only happen once and can only happen to a certain group of people. You know, I hope that nobody in here thinks that or nobody at home thinks that because it's just simply not true. That superabundance of gratitude, of thanksgiving can happen to all of us anytime on a regular basis. Not just one day of the year and not just over a slice of pumpkin pie. We just need to remember to practice Thanksgiving in our daily lives and to consistently bring in more and more of that superabundance that Myrtle talks about. So talking about the day of Thanksgiving, Myrtle said, get in the habit of truly thinking about where the food came from every time you sit down to eat. And then thinking back of that to spirit, the great life that makes our vegetables and our fruits grow there would come into our minds great praise when we ate. So what about taking it even beyond food? You know, what about truly thinking about where all of that goodness in your life comes from? Not just that goodness on one certain day of the year. You know, what about the stores? 
in which we purchase that food from, the stores in which we fight those lines sometimes around Thanksgiving to purchase that food, the money we use to purchase that food. You know, the people that we purchase the food for, the people that we purchase that food from, the farmers and the people that worked hard and tilled the soil to give us that food, all of those people that will come over and enjoy it that day with us. What about the fact that those of us that are in this room together right now are all sitting here together instead of watching this talk from behind a screen? What about waking up this morning to this day or the breath that's moving in and out of your body right now? You know, there are so many things to be grateful for each and every day. So many ways in which we can consistently practice thanksgiving in our lives. You know, it can be so easy to focus on those things that we don't have in our lives, right? You know, having to get up early to give that presentation that we don't want to give at work. To have that phone conversation with that person we're trying to avoid. You know, having to deal with the people in our lives we find difficult. Uncle Ned talking about politics at the Thanksgiving table. You know, it's so easy to become focused on these things. And before long, we can really start to feel dragged down. And each time we do, the superabundance that Myrtle spoke about moves a bit further and further from our, away from our view, right? When we focus on those things we don't want. That superabundance doesn't move away from our grasp because it's always there, but from our view. The great 13th century German mystic Meister Eckhart once said, if the only prayer you ever say in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. Acts 24.3 from the Bible said, in every way and everywhere we accept this all with gratitude. Thich Nhat Hanh invites us to walk as if we are kissing the earth with your feet. It was often said that he practiced this with his feet. For instance, he'd take a step with his right foot and he would say thank you. Then he'd take a step with his left foot and he would say thank you. And he would do this over and over. So there is one thing I do want to mention. You know, when we do walk around in gratitude, we aren't walking around in a state of denial. You know, we aren't denying that there are things that may be affecting our lives in ways we don't like. You know, we aren't denying that there are things happening in life that we don't particularly enjoy. But gratitude allows us to provide ourselves with a dose of a type of resilience. And that resilience helps us to be able to step back for just a moment and to observe the situation from a different perspective. Gratitude raises our consciousness. And a higher consciousness doesn't mean that un undesirable things aren't necessarily happening in our world. But when you make Gratitude, a daily practice in your life, it helps you to be able to move forward and to do so with less fear, with a better understanding, and often the ability to view some of those things through a different lens, allowing more of that super abundance to be able to manifest in your life. So as we move through this time of Thanksgiving, I invite you to make it more about a part, or more than just a part of our history. More than something that took place many years ago. Enjoy the pumpkin pie, but also think about the larger picture. You know, think about gratitude and how it can extend beyond just a certain day, beyond parades and beyond football. You know, we have so much to be grateful for this year. We have a vaccine that's allowing all of us to be here. Allowing us to be with friends and family that we haven't seen in so long. You know, something that's allowing us to prevent the spread to some of the most vulnerable. We have breath in our bodies today. And we have life in our bodies to be able to feel this surge of life that is happening around us within this very moment. But most importantly, happy Thanksgiving and Namaste. And now I'm going to invite Nancy Sundahl, our treasurer, up. We had our board meeting this past Wednesday, so Nancy is going to give us a board report.